Say that with me. The spirit of faith. Father, we love you today. Thank you for the presence of the Lord that is here today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that our hearts would be open to hear what the Spirit says to the church. I pray that you would help me, O oh God, not just to speak my thoughts, but that I, Lord God, would echo what it is that you are saying today. Lord, speak to us today. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. I need some to drink. Amen. The nature of faith. I, I preached on Wednesday because on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday I have I had been feasting upon the word and what it says about faith. And a, a, a Thursday, the Lord didn't change the channel for me. And Friday, I was still on that same frequency of faith. And so Wednesday night, I preached about the nature of faith. That, that faith endures, that, that, that the value of faith is increased and purified when it is tried. Everybody say faith endures. The Bible tells us that faith obeys. The proof of faith is that it is obedient to the Lord and his word. If faith does not obey, it is Fool's gold, fake. Faith prays. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Faith prays. The other point was faith speaks, the sound of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. So if you boil it down, real faith when it is tried, is more precious than gold. It is real. It is valuable. It is substantive. Amen. I, I, faith can see. The Bible tells us that, 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 that now faith. Everybody say now faith. Say now faith. Not yesterday faith or tomorrow faith, but now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The gift that God has given every man a measure of is the measure of faith. Faith helps us see what we could not see without it. Let me ask you, if there was an ability for someone to do this, if they walked up to you and said, for a million dollars, I would like to buy your right eye. And for $10 million, I would like to have your right and left eye. How many of you would sell your eyes for $10 million? Amen. The difference between blindness and closing our eyes is that we have the opportunity to choose to open our eyes. Closing our eyes is just willingly being blind. I'd be unwise to walk all around this pulpit with my eyes closed. Amen? And so I can't open my eyes and I can see to function safely and I wouldn't trade that for $10 million. Amen? To be able to look on my beautiful wife and her face... Amen. I would trade that for a hundred million dollars. Oh, I love my wife. Amen. To look at a chocolate cake. I took a picture just the other day. I was at Chili's. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to try to, amen, contain myself. One of the most beautiful masterpieces I had seen in quite some time. It was, it was like the chocolate and molten lava cake. And it, see, and I get a witness. Amen. It was beautiful. It had caramel and hot chocolate up in the middle of that thing with, mm, this is getting good to me. Hallelujah. If I keep doing this, I got to preach a short sermon because y'all going to be running for the doors. Amen. I, you know, it looked good and tasted even better. But if, 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 if the difference between blindness and closing my eyes is, is I have a choice there. And faith, 
is the ability to see. And faith is a choice that we make. We have to make a choice to believe. The world is full of people that are willingly blind to the proof of God in the world. Even if they've never heard a preacher and they've never read a Bible, there is a proof. If they would just open up what God gave every man, they would be able to see the fingerprints of God in every place and every time. Amen. You can't look up at the stars at night and see the magnitude. And if you do a little bit of study and realize that even the smartest guys and the biggest computers still have not computed how big the heavens are. And we see the absence and the refusal to acknowledge God in our uh, 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 so-called science community. The Bible calls so-called science. I think they got it right. It's still so-called science. Science that, is, that, that can be seen and can be proven and can be repeated and stands up under the scientific uh, theory, I think it is. Scientific method, that's science. But so many people that, that, that try to prove what isn't provable say that if I don't believe the improvable, then I don't believe in the provable. I believe what you can see because the science of the Bible is repeatable and it's provable. The Bible says that every seed that is in itself, they will give after their kind. Amen. There may be chihuahuas and there may be Dobermans, but they're still dogs. Thank you, Jesus. That's free. That wasn't even in my notes. Amen. So I think that we recognize, even as believers, there are times when we disengage our faith. Because we can become so blinded to faith because sometimes to engage your faith, you have to close your eyes. Sometimes the only way to really see your faith is to close your eyes. The Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so we have to recognize that, that the real challenge of faith at times is we have to be able to turn off our natural senses to perceive the supernatural possibilities that God wants to bring about in our life. Amen. So, so you know what? My faith is not for sale. I'm not going to trade in my faith for money. I'm not going to trade in my faith for education. I, I, I believe you can be educated and I believe you can be blessed at the same time. But I do believe it is possible. The Bible says Jesus is talking to the disciples and, 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 and he, he begins to talk about the rich and the poor and how, how, how you know, the, the, the challenge. And, and he said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved. Now what I want to know is why are all these preachers promising people to get rich when the Bible says it's easier for them to go to hell rich? They're stirring up the lust of the flesh to want something God may not want for them. When in reality, many times when people get blessed to such a degree, they start tipping God and not tithing God. Amen. They start blessing God with his, their presence rather than being blessed by God's presence. Amen. I, you know what the Bible tells us? The, Jesus said the proof that he was the Messiah when he sent word back to John the Baptist was that the poor hear the gospel preached. Amen. And so in our getting, amen, I believe in education. My children, by the help and grace of God, amen, will go to college. They will be educated. They will be successful. They will do something good with their life. But more important than that stuff that don't count. Do you know when we get to heaven, there's not going to be a doctor's and a lawyer's line? Amen. There's not a doctor's parking lot right beside the Golden Gate. We're not going to be judged by how many degrees we had. We're not going to be judged by how much education we had. Amen. We're going to be judged by what, what we did with the talents he gave us, not with the education we gained in the process. Amen. Amen. You know what? I'd rather my children, if it's an either or, it's not an either or. I've known very educated and wealthy people that were good praying people. But I would never encourage my children to, 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 to go to Hollywood. I would never desire my children to become a famous singer. I, I pray against that curse. I, it's a curse. 
the temptation of Satan to Jesus was uh, bow down to me and I'll give you the kingdoms of men. How many people have sold their children before they even had a chance to push them into a way that would be a hindrance to them and not a, a blessing to them? Man, this isn't in my notes, but it's in the Holy Ghost. And so my sight, my faith is not for sale. Real faith experiences the promise. Faith that is not obeyed is faith that never lives in promise. Promise is experienced by, by the people of God when they obey him and his word and his leading. Faith will ask you to leave evil influence. What does that mean? Faith brings separation. But the process of bringing separation births a promise in us. What was the first communication that Abraham had with God? Come out from your, 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 your kindred and your kin and I'll show you a promise. Amen. That, 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 that promise could have never been born if, if Abraham had not obeyed. In fact, if you read Hebrews 11, the Bible says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. It's not, you know, I think it's just incredible and, 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 and amazingly simple that people in this culture argue incessantly about the concept of faith and works. When in the Bible, it's written by Jews and it's Jewish influence and they're not talking or debating whether faith equals obedience. They're talking about faith, contrasting it with the Old Testament. The works of the law, the washings of the law, the celebrations of the law. You can't be saved by circumcision. Nowhere do you find that you don't have to obey God. Your faith is enough, but that is, that is the, whenever people get to talking about, well, you're saved by faith alone. Well, where's that in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible that you're saved by faith alone? Amen. There's only one scripture where you find those two words together. James chapter 4. Faith without works is dead. Being alone. And so it, the, 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 it, he's talking about their obedience. Obedience. We have to have obedient faith. Faith without obedience is fiction. Faith will, will ask you to do hard things. Faith is consecration. The Lord asked Abraham to do a hard thing. But when the Lord asks you to do a hard thing and you do it in faith, it births covenant. Amen. You would not read about Abraham today if he was not willing to do the hard thing. That hard thing that God asked him to do became the identifying mark upon all the seed of Abraham. If they did not do the hard thing, it became, for Abraham, he did it as an adult. But from that point on, it became something someone did for their children. They did hard things for their children. Can I tell you, you've got to be willing to do the hard things for your children. If they're going to be involved in the covenant of God, amen, without a lot of hardship, you're going to have to recognize, amen, this is a, a joint thing. Faith will ask you to give all. That's what the Lord asked Abraham to do. He, no doubt the Lord asked him to give Isaac. But really what Isaac was, Isaac was Abraham's all. I want you to give me the one thing I've already given you and you waited for and you labored for and believed for. And at the end of the day, I want it back. How many of you are willing to give God back what he gave you? He, he wants all. That's what that is. That's an encapsulation of Abraham's whole being. Even his name was wrapped up in that boy. But when you are willing to enter into a spirit of sacrifice with God, it births multiplication. God did something for Abraham after that point of sacrifice that never happened before. It was at the point of sacrificing Isaac that the Lord said, now I know. Since you've done this thing, to me that's just an incredible thing. I, I can't even try to explain it. The Lord discovered something. 
I don't ask me to a- a- explain that. It's in the book. Argue with that. When I get to heaven, Lord, what did that mean? Because that's, that's pretty, that's mind-boggling stuff. He said that in blessing thee, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. To separate faith, you know, this, this concept. Abraham would have never been what he became. He would have never got what he got. We would not read about Abraham like we read about him if it had not been his obedient faith. To separate faith from obedience is like trying to separate pregnancy from childbirth. If that child does not come out, it's dead. If that child comes out, it's life. Faith without works is, faith's got to come out. Faith's got to be expressed. Faith is, must be obeyed. I found it interesting as I studied for this message that, that in the Greek, faith is a noun, but belief is a verb. Faith is a thing, but belief is an action. What you have in faith causes your belief to do it. If you do not believe, amen, there, there is a, there's a lacking of validity of your faith. Amen, I want to read the text again that I read to you. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 5 and 6. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Amen. Everybody say the work of the spirit is beyond my understanding. I don't know how a child is formed. It is a miracle that a microscopic thing can become a beautiful little baby. I love little babies. Amen. I get around little babies, it makes me want to have another one. Amen. I don't know that she feels that way. I actually had a dream the other day that she, that she told me that, that she was pregnant. And I knew it was a dream because I was happy and she was too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know how that works. But it is a miracle. It is a miracle. If, if you just look at, at their itty-bitty fingers and their itty-bitty toes and their itty-bitty eyes and their itty-bitty nose, they smell new. We watched a video the other day of Noah. Amen. And one of the boys says, he looks like a baby bird. He just, he just brand new. And, and I don't know how God does that. But he says, he says in that, he said, nor do you know how God works. The scripture says, in verse 6, in the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. What's that say? Live in faith. Walk in faith. Pray in faith. Respond in what it is the Lord has for you to do. So, witness, pray. Because you don't know how the Lord works. So quit trying to figure it out. Do what's in your hand to do. Don't be discouraged by the things you see. But do what it is you have to do. I remember, I don't know how old I was, maybe 16, 17 years old. And uh, I remember... I had a landscaping business, and in you, most of you know that in the in the summer morning, you can look up and it'll be overcast, and just a little bit, it'll clear up and just be just a beautiful day. And I remember one day I went out and I looked up and I said, "Well, I don't guess I'm gonna work today." I said that to my dad. My dad looked at me. He said, "The Bible says that he that observeth the clouds will neither sow nor reap." And that stuck with me to, the, to this day. Don't, don't let what something looks like change what it is that you do. Work in, and sometimes work in the rain. It might not rain very long. So 
So I don't know what will be blessed. These are the thoughts I was having the other Friday morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was out trying to get healthy and I, I was walking around the track at the gym. And Amen. I, I heard someone say something about a bone and, and, and it's, I had to turn it off and I just began to think about the, the scripture about not knowing how the bones grow in the womb of a woman. It sparked something in me and I began to ponder about God's working and how and I, the, the word that was in my heart was the miracle of multiplication. Amen. As I stand here, I am telling you the truth. What I'm about to tell you, you're going to think I made this up. I walk out. I don't whistle. I would be whistling if I could whistle, but my whistle sounds about like my singing. I mean, maybe a little worse. And so I was bebopping around and had a silent whistle. Hallelujah. And uh, I, I approached my truck that was parked near the median in the corner of the median at the gym there were the flowers and the trees grow and there was a little lady old, older lady there kind of on her knees and she had like a cup and a bowl and and I kind of checked it out I'm like this is strange so I walked over onto the passenger side of my truck and I just kind of stepped up I said ma'am pardon me for being curious but can I ask you what you're doing and she says, she laughs, looks up, she said, oh, I'm just feeding these feral cats. She said, they, we've got a bunch of feral cats in the, in the, in the gutters, the, the storm drain, and uh, we, we want to take care of them, but they got a bunch of kittens, and so this is a temporary fix until we can handle this. And I said, well, that's very nice. I said, I'm a pastor, and, and I bet there's a sermon in that somewhere. She laughs and she gets up and kind of walks toward me and she says, you know what, I, I think I could tell you something that, that'll preach. I said, okay, I'm always looking for a sermon. She says, you know, two cats, two individual cats in seven years can produce 400,000 cats. That seems almost unbelievable. That's, a, I mean, for a cat lover, that's a lot of cats. Otherwise, that's crazy. I looked it up. It's true. I Googled it. In 10 years, it's 2 million cats. That's if every, if the first two cats have 2.8 litters, no, they have two litters a year, and in each litter, they have 2.8 cats. And each one of those 2.8 times 2.8 times... 400,000, that's a, somebody said that's a lot of cats. I, and when, I, when, when, when she said that, she laughed, she pointed over there, she said, my husband, she, they hadn't been married, married very long, she pointed over there and said, my, my pastor says about my husband that before she, he married me, he didn't like cats. But now he loves whatever I love and so he gets to hang out with me. I got in the truck and I just began to ponder the way of God. I don't know how God works, but I believe the Lord planted the cat lady in front of my truck to show me how big, amen, God's math works. Because I don't know the way of the Spirit, but the way of the Spirit is greater than the natural realm. And there is no limit to what God can do. Sometimes we read about in the book of Acts and we read how all of Samaria heard the word and there was great joy in the city and everybody was baptized in Jesus' name. And God had done great things. <laughs> it does say they didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. It's amazing to me how bad theology has to ignore the Bible. And when confronted with what the Bible say, bad theology will do everything in its power to maintain what it is it believes. The scripture says that they heard the word, they believed every one of them was baptized in Jesus' name, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. You can check it in Acts chapter 8. They sent the apostles to lay hands on them so they'd get the Holy Ghost. It was pretty important that they got the Holy Ghost. Something that happened is separately from their faith, separately from their baptism. They needed something that was beyond faith. Read Acts chapter 10 or Acts chapter 19. There's faith, there is a baptism, and there's Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Faith is a wonderful thing, but faith must be followed. I was having a discussion the other day with one of my boys about, you know, this discussion about faith and where salvation happens. And, and he said to me, he said, now you know what would be really neat? 
He said, if the Bible had a situation where people that wanted to be saved asked how to be saved, and then the apostles told them how to be saved. <laughs> He's so clever. Everybody say Acts chapter 237. Yeah, it, it tells it. It tells it. Amen. Everybody say faith. Faith. I, 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 the spirit of faith. I truly believe that, that what the Lord has been whispering in my ear just a few days this week, and I believe it is a word that the Lord wants to hear you hear it, see you believe it, is that there is no limit to what God can do. Amen. There is a time of plowing. And there is a time of sowing. But if you sow, there is a time of waiting. But you can look back over your backstory and you can look at some things you've prayed about and you can look at some people you've talked to and some testimonies you've shared and some, some witnessing you've done. And I may not know when harvest time comes for you, but Brother Dwayne, I, I just feel like it's my season. I feel like it's your season. I believe we are entering into a season of blessing and we must not be... be, be uh, 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 intimidated by the fact, amen, we don't have a house full of cats. We got a few cool cats, singing cats, amen, but all of us cats got the Holy Ghost. Is that right? And I'm here to tell you that if we will uh, believe God and obey God and, and not withhold our hand, don't hold our tongue, don't uh, 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 s s cover our light, amen, don't water down what God's given us and just be the child of God God called us to be and do what the God has called us to do and be all and pray all and do all that the Lord leads us to do. There is a miracle of multiplication that happens when we will live in the spirit and we will walk in the spirit it will lead us to a place of God's purpose and God's blessing because the spirit of faith it is a me it's measured by God man if I want God to if I want someone to measure something in my life I want God to measure it Amen. Because God don't have a five foot tape measure. God doesn't have a one yard measuring stick. Amen. His hands are bigger than mine. Amen. His feet are bigger than mine. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, I'm glad today to know that God is the one that is going to measure my blessing in my life. Amen. In the old days, the, the measurement was determined by certain measurements of the king. Well, I'm here to tell you today, amen, measure on King Jesus. Come on now. Amen, I'm here to tell you there's no limit. The Lord said to Abraham, he said, he said, walk up and down the land. Say that with me, walk up and down the land. He said, wherever your foot, wherever your foot, everybody say foot. Wherever your foot is, I'll give it to you. But you know what I think is so great? He said, whatever your eye sees, I'll give it to you. You know what? For too long, the Lord talks to us, and we get down on our knees, and we tuck our head and pray, oh God, bless us. But you know what? I believe there comes a time in our life when the Lord begins to talk to us. We need to get find the highest spot. Amen. And see how far we can see. Because whatever we set our eye upon, amen, I'm here to tell you the Lord is able to give it to us. Amen. There, the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly, yes. abundantly, yes. above what? All, all that we ask. Amen. Some things we're not even bold enough to, that, to ask. Amen. Lord Jesus, deliver me from this microphone. Somebody say, praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm almost through, but not quite. Can we pray right here in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you today for your blessing that I feel in this place. Lord God, you know where we're at and you know what we need. And you, oh God, are truly, Lord God, all that we need. God, you've provided us and promised us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 
Lord Jesus, oh God, when you purchased, oh God, our salvation, God, you didn't, you didn't buy the economy model, but Lord Jesus, you have promised us every bell and every whistle. Lord Jesus, there's healing in our salvation. Lord Jesus, there's vision in our salvation. Lord Jesus, there's redemption in our salvation. There is miracles in our salvation. Hallelujah, there is, no, there is exploits in our salvation. Hallelujah, whatsoever we do in word or deed, we're going to do it all in Jesus' name. And you told us these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, Lord. I want, Lord Jesus, for a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in my life. Lord God, I want a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in my family. Lord God, I want something new like I've never had before. Hallelujah. I want a new blessing. I, I desire a new anointing, Lord. I desire a new vision, Lord. I want to see your purpose oh God hallelujah 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 God has given every one of us the measure of faith and the Bible says faith comes by hearing faith comes through preaching amen the Bible says my faith is built up by praying the Bible says it gets better in the hard times amen the Bible tells us so many things about our faith and I believe we need to preach it we need to prophesy it. we need to pray it we need to give our faith some words we need to give our faith something to work with Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the prophet said, in verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Everybody say, upon me. The Bible says that the prophet said, he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Can I tell you, sometimes the Lord puts us in the middle of defeat. Sometimes the Lord puts us in the middle of something that looks like an impossibility. And we think, my God, why have you set me down, not on the mountaintop, but in a valley? And not in the midst of life, but in the midst of death. But the Bible says that the Lord set the prophet in the valley, in the middle of a bunch of dead, dry bones. Can I tell you, sometimes the Lord has to put you in a valley, surrounded by defeat, so that he can speak to to you about the possibilities of his spirit he set him down in the middle of the valley full full of bones can I tell you amen if you feel like you've been surrounded amen sometimes you just got to close your eyes I believe God 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 I am not going to be discouraged. I am not going to be defeated by what is around me and what I can see. I ain't almost through. And he calls me to pass by them round about. He, the Lord picked him up and drug him around so he could see just how bad it was. Did you see those bones over there behind that rock? Hey, did you miss this group over here? And hey, there's a parcel of the big defeat over here. The Bible says he took me around and caused me to see all there was to see. And you know what is, you know, and he says there, there were very many Everybody say very many. There were very many in the open valley. What's that mean? There's a valley with no end. That's a preach up in there. I think I could preach on that for a little while, brother. It's an open valley. And, uh, and it says, he said, lo, they were very dry. Hallelujah. And he said unto, him, unto me, son of man, can these, what's it say? Bones live. I started out reading to you about how we don't know how bones, amen, are formed in the womb of a woman. But here is God showing a prophet bones that belong to men and they're dead and they're dry. And the Lord says, can these bones live? And I love what the prophet said. He didn't say no. And he didn't say yes. He said, only God knows. Whew. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to know everything. 
Amen. I heard Donald Rudsfield say, my wife, it's just there somewhere. There's a, there's a cartoon, not a cartoon, a commercial. It's probably like a cartoon. It's a joke. Amen. He says, there are known knowns. There are things that we know we know. There are known unknowns, things we know we don't know. And then there are unknown unknowns, things we don't know that we don't know. Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, that was one sharp cookie right there. Oh, Don. So he says, Lord, thou knowest. And again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. He didn't say prophesy to the bones because the bones couldn't hear. There are times you need to prophesy over people that can't even hear you, people that can't even see you, people that don't believe in you, people that have rejected you, people that are dead to you. Prophesy upon them and say unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Let's say it, the Lord God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And the Lord says to these dry bones, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring upon flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So the man of God prophesied. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Can I tell you, gotta, we got to learn how to do what the Lord tells us to do. We got to learn how to pray about what the Lord tells us to pray about. Even if you have a hard time believing it, we need to be bold enough to pray what our faith is lacking in. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, not at the end of my prophesying, but when I began to prophesy, stuff started happening. Amen. There was a whole lot of, whole lot of shaking going on. Yeah. Amen. There was a noise. And behold, the shaking and the bones, what they do, came together. Amen. It wasn't a, 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 a finger bone connected to a foot bone. And it wasn't Joe's bone connected to Jose's bone. They know who I'm talking about. Juan's bone connected to Jose's bone. Amen. Each one connected to his bone the one it belonged to do you know the Lord knows where the stuff is you lost it may be even removed from your hand it may be on the other side of the valley but the Lord knows where your stuff is I've heard people say you know is there anything wrong with getting cremated man the Lord can put you back together out of dust Amen. The Lord can put you together if you were in a bad car wreck. The Lord can put you together if you uh, drown in a sea and the, the, the fish eat you up and you're spread all over the ocean. And then eat up by more fish and spread out more over the ocean. Amen. God is able to put you back together. Amen. I'm here to tell you the Bible says that each bone came upon his own bone. And when I beheld low the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above. I've seen the Lord do some stuff, but God, it just ain't finished yet. Amen, they're better, but they're still dead. They got a job, but they still high. Amen. Come on now. Things are better, but they're not like they should be. And then the Lord said, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon thee slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. 
and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Do you know what this story is about? It is the spirit of faith. It is something that the Lord wants to, you to see about your valley and your bones and your troubles and your defeats and the things that you have not overcome. And the Lord wants you to see, hey, God is able to save my family. God is able to save my brother. God is able to help me in my financial mess. God is able. And I'm through. Let's stand together. Lord, thou knowest. Lord, God, stuff I don't know. Lord, thou know stuff I don't understand. But in the name of Jesus, I trust you today. I trust you with the trouble. I trust you, oh God, with the discouragement. Oh God, it's more than trust, but God, I see it. My faith claims it, and my mouth speaks it. And I'm going to do what it is you lead me to do. I'm not going to keep on doing all that same old dumb stuff, but God, I'm going to begin to do your stuff. I'm going to begin to be able to do what you've called me to do. In the name of Jesus, there is a spirit of faith in this place. And I'm going to be so bold to tell you that today while I preach, you got it. I believe every person in this place, if you heard me preach, I don't have to lay hands on you today. I believe you're going to leave here because you got something that I got. I'm contagious today. And today I'm preaching to you faith that's going to go with you today. I have given you something by the word of God and the spirit of God and God's going to do something. He is doing, he has done something. And don't be surprised when all of a sudden you have something to pray about that you hadn't prayed about in a long time and you meet somebody you hadn't met in a long time and you hear something you hadn't heard in a long time because faith cometh by